here in L.A. Golden State will win here for the first time since November of 2021 and beat the Lakers here for the first time since October 19, 2021. Horn sounds, hug shakes, or rather hands and hug shakes, uh, hugs on the floor. I don't know what I'm doing. Final score. Warriors 128 and the Lakers 121. It's time for Warriors Wrap Up. We'll bring you into the locker room and hear from Coach Kerr and the players. Highlights from the game. Warriors Wrap Up starts now. I, I feel you, Tim Roy. If I had to take about 20 minutes between describing the action of a game and then the finality of a game, I'd probably be coughed up a little bit too. That's why he's the GOAT because he can be self deprecating, he can be instructive, he can be detailed, he can be creative, and he can also nail the big call. That was Tim Roy at the end of the Warriors win 128 to 121 against the Los Angeles Lakers at crypto.com arena. Don't worry, I'm not going to take your time. We don't have a shot clock issue. Not one, not five, not six, not seven here on 95.7 The Game. My name is Evan Giddings and this is Warriors Wrap Up. We are all about you. We are all about the people. We want to hear from you after the Warriors get a necessary victory. So well put by Tim Roy in at Los Angeles as they are now officially tied for the ninth seed in the Western Conference. I think there's a, a variety of ways you can go with this game. Look it up and down the box score. If you watch this game from beginning to end, it was one that might have appeared to be tighter than expected down the stretch after Anthony Davis leaves at the beginning of the second quarter or toward the tail end of the first quarter. The Warriors get busy in the paint. Stephen Curry returns 34 minutes, 31 points for the chef, all of which, by the way, after the first quarter. Clay Thompson and Jonathan Kaminga, I thought, carried the load offensively in the first half and then pretty much by committee. In addition to Stephen Curry, they take it the rest of the way. A classic old-school Draymond Green game tonight, plus 12. Only had six points, but 13 assists and just two turnovers in 34 minutes for Draymond Green. Andrew Wiggins, relatively efficient in his 30 minutes, doing a decent job defensively. And then Klay Thompson off the bench, just an absolute firecracker. 21 of his 26 points coming in the first half. And even someone like Brandon Pajemski continuing to take charges, grabbing offensive rebounds. Tonight was a team effort by the Golden State Warriors as they defeat the Los Angeles Lakers on the road, 128 to 121. Ironically, now the Warriors have more road victories than home wins as they put themselves at least for now in the ninth position in the Western Conference to host a potential elimination game against the team they just beat tonight. But I do want to hear from you at 888-957-9570. How are you feeling after the victory? I don't care if you've been hanging out all day, enjoying the St. Patty's Day Parade here on Market Street. If you're out in the East Bay, North Bay, South Bay, how do you feel about taking down the Lakers from down south? Are you feeling like you're a little hesitant because of the Anthony Davis you know, injury? Apparently had an eye swollen shut that didn't allow him to return to that game. Are you feeling a little bit hesitant because he saw LeBron James still go for 40 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds and make it a game towards the stretch there? Are you feeling like the Warriors have been able to find an identity that really they just picked up right where they left off with Stephen Curry stepping back in the starting lineup, Draymond Green being there as well. Are you looking at Steve Kerr and saying, this is what the playoff rotation is going to look like? I saw an eight-and-a-half man rotation tonight. Gary Payton was the ninth man, but he only got seven minutes. That, to me, looks like a rotation that Steve Kerr is going to play the majority of the games that they need to get like they did tonight in terms of positioning themselves for the playoffs to try and make a run at this thing. Do you feel like this... Eight-man lineup, eight-and-a-half, nine-man lineup has staying power. I want to hear from you at 888-957-9570. I've been getting with you here on Warriors Wrap-Up. And really want to, where I want to start tonight is, you know, the, the Warriors did need this game. I mean, however you, you want to slice it, we talked about it pretty much the entire morning on, on Warriors this week, and we were discussing all the hypotheticals and some of the things that needed to happen uh, between now and the end of the season, some of the things that could happen in the offseason. But in regards to this evening, that was a game you had to win, because if not, you're pretty much pigeonholed into the 10th seed, and you have to win two elimination games on the road, two essential game sevens, two do or dies. And if you got to go through LeBron James, I think that's a daunting task, in addition to potentially Luka Doncic or going into Sacramento. All these things are in front of the Warriors, but... Tonight was an essential win for Golden State, and they got it. No matter how they did, I'm not going to sit up here and say, you know, this was nitpicky, that was nitpicky. They got a win that they needed to get, um, that I did expect them to get, although I didn't expect, I guess, the, the fashion in which it happened. I mean, 38 assists tonight for Golden State. I thought the offense looked beautiful. Uh, 38 assists, only seven turnovers. And in fact, for those that were kind of wondering what the, the free throw disparity was going to look like, 
And it was 18 to 15, relatively even. The Warriors, I guess, did have more personal fouls. And then, of course, down the stretch at the end there, uh, they I, I, don't, I don't know what was going on with the Crypto.com shot clock, at least on the, the left side of the basket from everyone watching at home on television. That was just utterly ridiculous. I mean, even LeBron James is saying he's, he's too old for this crap. The dude might have turned 40 years old by the time that the Warriors and the Lakers actually got back to playing basketball. I felt like myself, Sterling Bennett, Chris O'Connell here back in the 95-7 The Game Studios all aged together, and we're not aging gracefully back here. I don't know what was going on at the Crypt, but I felt like we were in a Crypt with how long we had to wait to watch basketball and finish out that game. Thought we'd get it about, you know, 8.20, 8.30. So we're looking at 8.45 here. We had 15 minutes of our lives wasted. I don't want to waste any more. So again, the number is 888-957-9570. Evan Giddings with you on Warriors Wrap-Up. What's up to our YouTube and Twitch chat? Powered by First Store Cal Credit Union. I see MVP JB. Clay Thompson is my boy. Great game by Clay. I agree that first half was absolutely necessary. Him along with Jonathan Kaminga. And even Andrew Wiggins at the beginning of the game did a very good job offensively. When Anthony Davis was on the floor, this was something I was curious to see how the Lakers would approach the wings. Because, again, when you're looking at the postseason, you're looking at how the Warriors match up, you know you got Curry as a number one option. But the Lakers have been such a tough matchup for Golden State, I think because of the three through five position. How were the Warriors, as a relatively smaller group compared to Hachimura, Anthony Davis, as well as LeBron James going to match up. And we only saw that for one quarter. And the Lakers led 36 to 30 because they pretty much shut off the paint. And then once Anthony Davis left the game, that paint absolutely opened. But even in the first quarter, I thought Kaminga, like the Lakers essentially said, we're not going to let Curry get a shot off. We're not going to let Curry begin to get busy. He only took two shots, I believe, in the first quarter, didn't make either of them. And instead it was Kaminga and Wiggins who scored the first 17 points of the game. They dared Kaminga to shoot. He hit a corner three. He hit a pull-up three off the dribble. He got into the paint. I thought he got fouled on a, on a free-throw line jump shot as he made, I think, four of his first five from the floor. And then even Wiggins. And Kaminga was creating for him. Whipped it out to Wiggins at the top of the key in the first quarter. It was able to knock down a three. I thought the wings really set the tone for this basketball game and, of course, allowed the likes of the Splash Brothers, Clay Thompson off the bench this evening, then Stephen Curry down the stretch of that game to really get going once things opened up inside. Uh, I thought Draymond Green was also fantastic this evening and really, you know, whether it was with his rebounding, but particularly his passing, uh, he was the point forward tonight that we have come to know and love. And one thing I just kept thinking about was the 2015 season when Draymond Green essentially put the dunker spot on the map. And tonight it was to Kaminga again and again. And it felt like he was just throwing it higher and higher to the rafters at Crypto.com Arena. And Kaminga just went out and flushed it, including the very last one to essentially put the game away. So a necessary victory for the Warriors. They're now 35 and 31. 18 of those victories have come on the road as they dropped the Los Angeles Lakers 128 to 121 on the road, a place where the Lakers have been very good at home, by the way, 24 and 12 now on the season as they move via winning percentage into the ninth seed, uh, but are officially tied with the Los Angeles Lakers as the Warriors still have an extra game to play on them in the standings in the Western Conference. All right, from the Comcast Business Text Line from the 510, Warriors will beat the Lakers as long as there is no Lonnie Walker. Uh, that's fair. Uh, that that guy did steal a game from you last year down in Los Angeles. A place that, by the way, the Warriors hadn't won against the Lakers. I think they'd beat the Clippers in November of 2021, it was. But they hadn't beat the Lakers since October 19th of 2021. And I felt like it was bound to happen tonight. Didn't necessarily foresee the, the injury and the impact of Anthony Davis. Uh, but I felt like the Warriors understood how important this game was in the micro, but also the macro, because you're getting healthy. You want to get off on the right foot and begin this run, but you also want to give yourself an advantage and pretty much put yourself in a position to win the head-to-head battle, which will come down to April 9th, in which they meet Los Angeles and the Lakers for their final meeting um, at Chase Center. So 888-957-9570. Let's get out to, let's start with Tracy. Uh, Sorry, Drew Down and Tracy. My bad, Drew. Drew, my man, how are you? You're on Warriors Wrap-Up. What's going on? Hey, good evening, Evan. Doing a hell of a job as usual, man. Thank you. Just want to start off by saying I hate the Lakers. <laughs> I hate the Lakers. I hate the Lakers. I hate losing to the Lakers. I'm more happy that I'm, I'm. I hate losing to them more than I like beating them. So, just great to see us get a dub over the Lakers. Uh, that Davis injury was huge. Uh, you know, hope, hope it wasn't serious. Hope he's back on the court. You know, ASAP. All of that. But I. 
Anthony Davis just just kills us. So when he went out the game, that was definitely a plus for us. Um, and then Steph, yeah, obviously Steph coming back, making big shots, doing what Steph does. You know, J.K. continues to impress. I I I just love him and Wiggins together on the court, offensively, offensively and defensively. On defense, they they give us a lot of versatility. You know, switching between them and they can both attack the paint, hit the jumper, and just draw the defense inside. So I I love J.K. and Wiggins together. They're I, I love their their ability on on both sides of the court. Uh, Draymond with his normal solid game. Clay well, Clay was huge off the bench. I, I I love him off the bench. I love he's embraced that. Uh, you know, he's able to come in the game and just, you know, just score. You know, obviously, I don't want to sell him short. You know, he, he you know, drops it off when, he, when need be. But I feel like for him, it's easier just to come in the game and just, you know, come in gung-ho and, and just fire. And so, huge game from Clay. And then uh, Trace, it seemed like pretty much getting the rest of the front court minutes. You know, Loon and Cyrus didn't touch the court. Uh, so, I, I love Trace. I, I think, you know, he, he has his struggles at times, but I love what he provides to his team. So, Glad to see him getting big, uh, big minutes. And I know Moody got a DMP. Uh, I'm not going to stress too much. That might have just been a matchup thing. So you know, maybe you know, other games he'll get it, he'll get in the game. But like you, like you were alluding to, I think the the rotation is kind of coming more into focus. Um, you know, uh, as far as the you know the players are probably going to get major minutes. So great win tonight. You know, still you know we're still on the bottom of the play in, but yeah. I just like to see this team get W's and and. No matter who we're playing, I don't I don't care about the 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 uh you know what the opponent is and how good they are. Just keep getting W's and position yourself as best you can to you know to make a run. Uh, you know when when the play in or playoffs start. Thanks a lot, Evan. Appreciate it, Drew. Yeah, good stuff, man. I'm with you. And to kind of take the baton from you there, I think the Warriors are in a position where all they have are you know essentially a mindset of just taking it one game at a time. Like you you win tonight. And that's a good win from the the head to head standpoint, and in the West. But then you got a, a feisty Knicks team that comes into Chase Center on Monday. You got to figure out how to, how to win that game. Then a Memphis team that you have been up and down against. You got to find a way to win that game on Wednesday, and then on Friday you get an Indiana Pacers team that's been playing pretty well. So you know the Warriors. It's not just the amount of games that that they have to continue to stack wins it, but it's also the amount of games that they'll play in a condensed fashion. And and that's why you know one thing I was curious to see is and not not necessarily the the workload from Steph. Like I expected him to be one hundred percent. And generally, when Curry comes back off injury, he's been cleared. Rick Celebrini is going to give him the full go ahead. And unless these guys miss an extended period of time, like Draymond needed a ramp up period when he came back from suspension, even though it wasn't injured. You're going to have to get back into basketball shape. It'll take a week. It'll take a few days, whatever it might be. Curry only missed nine days. And so there wasn't really, I don't think, too much concern about what the workload was going to be in the immediate. And we saw 34 minutes. But it also looked like the time off from Steph, like it, it got him fresh. It got him maybe some necessary rest that he wouldn't have otherwise received because he's going to have to play in those games against the Spurs, against, well, Spurs twice, and then, of course, Dallas. Um, I think also, quietly, Draymond Green having a week off kind of built in because of the lower back soreness against the Mavericks. Now, that's a game you also would like to win because there's Western Conference ramifications and playoff uh, consequences as a result. But any time that there's an injury uh, that doesn't that's not serious... It's not always just a, a huge blow. Sometimes it can be a blessing in disguise when it comes to some of the older guys. Now, I'm happy that someone like, like for example, Kaminga has been healthy as can be this season. Knock on wood, but that guy's been available each and every night. Brandon Bajemski has been available, and he played a game-high 35 minutes tonight. Even someone like Clay Thompson, though he's not the same Clay of old and he's gone through his injuries, uh, he's been available for the majority of this season. So availability is the best of uh, availability is the best ability. Uh, we, we know this, but now that the Warriors are whole, I, I do kind of think, and Drew, you were talking about, you know, is this a matchup thing? Why Moody was out? Why particular players were left out tonight? We saw Moses Moody, Dario Saric and Kavon Looney all not play. Like they were just out of the rotation. I guess you could throw Kenyonis in there. He's, he's gotten some time as of late, but this to me is what the rotation in a postseason series is is in all likelihood going to look like for Golden State, and I think it's because 
whatever the the backup wing minutes are going to be, I think they're going to be going to Gary Payton second. You know, Clay Thompson is you know a, a guard or, or wing off the bench, but if Pajemski's playing thirty five, Curry's playing thirty four, Kaminga. He only played 30 once, and I had, he probably would have gotten more minutes if he didn't get into foul trouble in the second half, in which Kerr had to go back even to Clay a little bit. Like, Clay probably was set to play, I don't know, 25 to 26 minutes tonight, but had to come in once J.K. picked up his fifth foul. And I thought that was actually a really smart move by Kerr, even though Clay's not nearly the defender Kaminga is. Immediately after Clay came into the game, LeBron took it at him, forced a foul. That would have been J.K.'s sixth, and he would have been gone. Now, they didn't end up needing him for what was an, an egregiously elongated finish to this basketball game. But in a playoff scenario, that's a situation where Kaminga picks up a ticky-tack foul on the and one on Austin Reeves and has to go to the bench. Like Those are going to be necessary situations where I think if Kaminga is either smarter or stays in front, that's a game where he probably plays 35 minutes. And so when I'm looking at Steve Kerr, how he set up this game in the first half, we didn't really see a lot of changes outside. I mean, Chris Paul only played 19 minutes tonight. And I, by the way, thought he was really good. Like, Chris Paul, and this is where he can, I think, just be the the gravy on top or kind of the cherry on top, so to speak. Chris Paul was able to steal a couple buckets for the Warriors in that second quarter. And then also, I thought, really cushioned the end of the third because Curry was cooking with grease. Like, he had, I think, 13 of his 26 points in the third quarter. Um, after following with 13 points in the second, he was hot as can be. He was hunting. He took 10 of the first 22 shots in that quarter, that quarter by the Warriors. So clearly, offensively, he was moving. I think he hit three threes of the five that he attempted. He was getting into the paint. Curry had it going. And Kerr took him out because around the three-minute mark, four-minute mark in that third quarter, that's typically when Curry sits. He's about the 25, 26-minute mark. And then Kerr will go back to him with about eight left in the fourth quarter to get him to the 34-35, depending on the game. I mean, in, in the playoffs, you're probably going to push Curry a little more, but in a regular season game, I think 34-35, especially coming off a four-game absence, or three and a half, three and two-thirds, yeah, three and a quarter. But coming off an absence, Kerr wanted to push him. And I felt like it was necessary to get Curry those minutes, but also looking up and down... Chris Paul was really good at being able to grab, you know, a, I think I think it was a jump shot at the tail end of the third. He set up, uh, a, he set up a layup. He had a total tonight. I mean, eight points, six rebounds, four assists. May not look like, like much in, in 19 minutes, but if you're able to keep the lead where it is when Curry comes off the floor, if you're not losing those non-Steph minutes against a team like Los Angeles, and LeBron played, <laughs> LeBron played heavy minutes again tonight. He played 38. Uh, D'Lo led the way with 40 for, for Los Angeles. But if you can get Chris Paul in there to kind of steal you a couple baskets at the tail end of quarters, an area which the Warriors have struggled, I think that adds a, a quiet boost to this team because also he's not going to give away possessions. He might not be the the same player, certainly not the scorer uh, or even the, even the defender that he used to be, but he's smart enough to not kill you at the tail end of quarters. Now, he didn't play well against Dallas, Paul did, because I think he was forced to start, and he probably had to play more minutes than is right for him at this stage in his career. But 20 minutes, if if necessary, if Curry's in foul trouble, if Pajemski's in foul trouble, 25 minutes in a game, uh, to me, that's perfectly fine for someone like Chris Paul. And then I, I do need to tip my cap to Clay Thompson. I mean, she, he shot the hell out of the basketball in the first half, and... He, along with Kaminga, I thought were the, the primary reasons why the Warriors were up at the break. You know, in the in the first quarter, Clay Thompson was just absolutely on fire. And in the first half total, let's just go through my notes here, 21 points in 14 minutes at 7 of 10 from the floor. But in that first quarter, you know, Clay Thompson comes in and immediately just goes 3 of 4 from the floor, has like 8 points in his first 4 minutes, and it was right after, by the way, a 7-0 Lakers run. So he comes into the game and starts knocking down shots. That is kind of just a, a counterpunch to a Los Angeles team that has been shooting better as of late. I think I heard Doris Burke say during the broadcast that over their last 20, 25 games, they've been shooting about 39% from the floor, or 39% from three. But if they're hitting you know, 55% of their shots in which it seemed like they were on pace to do. 
Uh, that's a really hard team to stop when they're getting everything they want in the paint. So I, I think the Warriors tonight got a necessary victory. I do want to dig in deeper on the front court for Golden State and the kind of staying power I believe it has. I also want to get into something that I saw specifically from Kaminga tonight because in a lot of ways I feel like he has... He's been on the rise, but he is he's quickly turning into a force for this Golden State team that is an absolute necessity, and I think he deserves some attention. Also want to hear from Steve Kerr on the other side and get you your hardest worker of their game. But we do have to take a break. In the meantime, line them up. Also, text messages, the YouTube chat powered by First NorCal Credit Union, 888-957-9570. We'll be back after this on Warriors Wrap-Up on 95.7 The Game. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop.
Dallas in L.A. And Curry knocks it down. Big time splash by number 30. Now back to Warriors Wrap Up on 95.7 The Game. Little did Tim Roy know the chaos was yet to ensue. And what I'm talking about is those six straight shot clock stoppages. Or I guess, can you even call it a stoppage if it never turns on? Is that, is that even a thing? I mean, basically just a, a shot clock. I, I, saw, I saw someone on Twitter say they should shoot the shot clock or just have the clock be shot. I was kind of with them, honestly. I mean, we wasted about 15 minutes of our lives in the last 30 seconds of the end of the two minute. I mean, it was like watching a baseball game with you know, pre, uh, pre three batter rules, pre pitch clock. And Bruce Bochy just wheeling and dealing every two pitches. It was it was unbelievable. Uh, but the Warriors do grab a necessary victory down in Los Angeles, one twenty eight to one twenty one against the Lakers. They are now officially tied for ninth place in the Western Conference after they grabbed their eighteenth road victory of the season. Steph Curry goes for thirty one points in the final three quarters in his return. Jonathan Kaminga and Clay Thompson lead the way in the first half offensively, especially Clay off the bench in microwave fashion. Draymond Green was a plus 12, but our hardest worker of the game. I think tonight it was Brandon Pajemski, and he was someone that just maintained the floor for the Warriors the entire night that he was out there. He was a game high plus 13. He only took four shots, made one three, but was tied for a team lead with three offensive rebounds. Great. To, took another charge, and I got to give a shout-out to our guy, KCBS, uh, Randy, who put out a very funny tweet earlier about how Brandon Pajemski is like a human bowling pin. Like, the guy is just made to be set in front of whatever bowling ball is coming and steaming down the lane and just gets knocked over. Like, when Jackson Hayes had a breakaway and was trying to set up his Euro step, it was... Like Pajemski, he just was kind of keeled over. Might have been tired from the previous possession defensively. And it was hilarious because he was just sizing him up the entire way. Like he saw him coming right down the court, knew where he was going to go, put his two feet in front of him, took the charge, and then laid on the ground like, I, like he got hit by a truck. So Brandon Pajemski is our hardest worker of the game, which, by the way, is brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, who works hard to serve the community. If you're looking for a career in law enforcement, learn more about job opportunities at Join ACSO. Dot com. All right, Evan Giddings here on 95.7 The Game. This is Warriors wrap-up again. The Warriors take down the Lakers. They beat the Lakers in Los Angeles, by the way, for the first time since October 19, 2021. And Mark and Milbray wants to react to the game here on 95.7 The Game. What's up, Mark, my man? How are you? Hey, what's up, man? Uh, first of all, just uh, that was uh, pathetic by the, uh, by the officials there down the stretch there, holding up the game like that. In those type of situations, even as a, a D2 player like me oh. or any place, high school, you know if the shot clock goes out, there's an issue. You know the PA guy does the uh, countdown. Mm. So I don't know why the hell uh, you guys are professional NBA officials continue to stop the game like that. That was just disgraceful on their part. And uh, they deserve to be, be have their game checks revoked uh, for that performance there. Now, luckily for the Warriors, it really didn't impact them there. They took care of business. Obviously, uh, Anthony Davis going out of the game is a huge impact. Uh, but, I mean, that was a complete accident there. Uh, Podemski didn't even mean to poke him in the eye. So that obviously had a huge impact on the on the game there because uh, Davis normally kills the, the Warriors. But if you're the Warriors, you can't worry about that. You took advantage of that good fortune on, on, on your part, and they really took over the game. I thought in the first half, Clay was spectacular. He was just... Uh, Back to himself, that splash brother that we need uh, out of him. Curry was great the whole game. Didn't really miss a beat there uh, coming off his injury. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Pademski, the little energizer be- uh, bunny there. Obviously, J.K. completely efficient. And Wiggins, when he's not lolly- lollygagging, being aggressive, uh, obviously on the, on the, specifically on the offensive end of the court, that's when he's at a best attacking there, uh, looking to score there, not just passive. That's what they need out of him. So this was a complete uh, team win that they needed now you leapfrog uh, the, the Lakers there, and that hopefully the, the the Warriors don't have any setbacks. You take care of the games you got to, especially at home. Beat the teams you have to beat, and you want to hold on to the ninth seed. Now, typically, we wouldn't say uh, they're better on the road than they are this year at home, but I think against the Lakers, I'm going to be much more comfortable playing them at Chase Center. They they obviously they've struggled against them because they give them with their size mismatch. It's their problem. But I mean, do you want to take a chance? You can play that play-in game in LA. No way in hell. So if you're the if you're the if you're the Warriors, 
you want to have that nine seed chase center play in game, you can beat this team at because at, they're not a good road team. So we know what the Lakers can do to them down in L.A. You finally what they won for the first time in three years or something like that. So hopefully this is a, a good fortune sign for them these last 15 games to really get it going because most likely you're going to be the nine seed uh, Dallas barring some major class by them. I don't think you're going to catch them two and a half games without 15 to go unless they go on some long losing streak. This is probably going to be the 9-10 to play a matchup. So I'm much what, – what is your opinion? I know the road and home record don't say that, but I think this is the one team that really scares you because I don't scare the Dallas or Phoenix. I think the Warriors can beat them either or, but this is the one team that continually terrorizes them with their size mismatch. So do you, do you agree with me on that, or does it not yeah. matter 9-10, uh, L.A. or at Chase Center? Thanks for the time. Yeah, no problem, Mark. I mean, I think it's drastically more difficult to win two road elimination games and then also go to a first-round series and try to win that. Like, essentially, you're going to have to win six of 11 games in the first two you have to win. I think that's really hard to do on the road when also you're pro- when you're going to be going into a first-round series if you win those two games and then you have to play from behind on the road. Like, I think that's that's just very difficult to do. So I would like to see them keep the nine. And that's where this win is important tonight. I mean, you're... Illy's currently in the driver's seat for the nine seed. You might be driving a Buick, but you're in the driver's seat for the nine seed right now, and that's where this win is important. It, the The road home thing is is weird. I mean, like the irony of it is right. They put themselves in a position to host a home game in the first elimination game, but they're a better road team than home team. Meanwhile, the Lakers are a much better home team than road team. I I, I don't know. To me, you always want the home game in a do or die game, and that's you know. Not to relitigate things, but that's why the 2016 Game 7 hurt so much, because it was at home. Winning road games in elimination format is very, very hard to do. And oftentimes, you need the best player on the floor, and you need an all-time performance, like the one that Steph Curry put on in Sacramento in Game 7 last year in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. So I would not like to have them go through that twice just to get to the playoffs, but we'll see. Who knows? And maybe they'll all be able to climb higher. But uh, let's get this thing rolling here on Warriors Wrap Up with Evan Giddings here on 95.7 The Game. Get out to Philmo Mike. Philmo, what's happening, my man? What's up with it, Evan? Nah, uh, keep doing your thing. Uh, great uh, great game. I like the fact that they did uh, with, the, with LeBron's three-pointer. Now, they took hella long, but I, I do like the fact that they uh, uh, took that away because yeah. – you know the plays where they had the three point shots and they say, well, that was actually a two or that was actually a three when they gave them two or three points, whatever it is. If that happens, if it, that, that's the same thing. They go, they go out there and they say, hey, uh, that, that's the two or that's the three. And if you stepped on the line, hey, you stepped on the line. I don't know why it takes them so long to, uh, figure out, you know, what happened in the review if, or, or whatever. I don't know what that was about. That was crazy. Same with uh, the Draymond travel, too, to Filmo. Like, same, same same thing with the Draymond. Both of them should not have taken, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, it shouldn't have. That's crazy. Uh, also, finally, Curry had a good game in L.A. versus the Lakers. <laughs> uh, he, got that, he got that little monkey off his back. He has, he, he sometimes played good against the, uh, the Clippers in mm-hmm. L.A. I don't know if it's the lighting. I know it's different lighting in L.A., but he finally had a, a, a very solid game. No, he did. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe saw Bad Bunny out there. He's a fan. I don't know. If Bad Bunny gets out the Lakers games much. What it was Ben Affleck, J Lo, Bad Bunny. Uh, who are the other celebrities that they were showing out there? I mean, it's it's always a an A list roster in Tinseltown. But no, you're right. Curry had a had a great game, especially the final three quarters. Like the Lakers, I thought did a very good job in the first quarter of not letting him get open. I mean, they were all over him, and he was clearly the focus, even though he's coming back off injury. And you could tell that everyone else was going to be given looks. And to their credit, people like Jonathan Kaminga, and I also do think Andrew Wiggins for for spurts in that first quarter were able to knock down shots. I thought Wiggins was aggressive at the beginning of the game. Uh, his His intensity and his energy to me waned throughout. But then again, you're also having a matchup with LeBron and Hachimura. Um, and in the first quarter, I guess, AD had specific points. So, no, I, I think that the front line of the Warriors, to me, is is where they were going to win and lose this game. It's interesting because the first time that Draymond started after coming back from suspension alongside Wiggins and Kaminga was the double overtime loss, 145-144, on January 27th. 
That was the first time we saw those three together. Now, Clay was still in the lineup. I think he played like 47 minutes that night. But that's the first time we saw that front court. So I was curious to see how they would play against them again. And I guess we didn't get a, a full look because AD went down and couldn't return after the first quarter. But I was impressed with the aggression, particularly from Jonathan Kaminga, because the Lakers were giving him open looks. They were allowing him not necessarily to drive to the paint, but he could force his way inside on a couple of those drives. But he was able to pull up, get some 12-footers, also hit a couple threes early on in that game. So they had to respect his jump shot. And I think that's where the confidence just continues to build for Kaminga. In addition to, once he gets into the paint, and if he gets you know cut off or isn't able to get to the 10, he's not afraid to kick it out. He knows where the shooter's supposed to be. There was a play in the first quarter where he drove baseline, kind of got hung up in the air, but managed to thread the needle out to Wiggins for a three-pointer. I thought that was a huge play for J.K. And throughout this game, I mean, the, the assist numbers are not certainly as gaudy as someone like Draymond Green, but four assists, that's a, that's something I can live with. Four assists and one turnover for Kaminga. Again, against Dallas when he had 27 points where he was forced to kind of be the scorer and the playmaker at points. He had, I think it was six or seven turnovers. So if those numbers are low, even if the assist, assist numbers are not ridiculous, um, I think Kaminga is, is, is someone that I, I really like getting aggressive. Uh, would like to see more than two rebounds. But then again, if you're hitting bodies, if you're boxing out, sometimes not, the ball is not going to fall to you. Um, but that's to me the next step of his game, in addition to just scoring and maybe setting up other players. It's how can we as a four or you know small forward kind of interchange with Wiggins, how can those two players get on the glass? Wiggins, to his credit, did have three offensive rebounds tonight. Um, so I do want to also get into that more in a moment, but I think Steve Kerr had something interesting to talk about after the game, and there's something that Kerr, I felt like, revealed to us moving forward for these last 16 that I'm going to pay special attention to, and I think that is going to tell us about what they're looking forward to in come postseason time. And here's what Steve Kerr had to say about the game, and it sounds like also about some of the uh, stoppages down the stretch. You said you wanted to see urgency. so you talked to them. Is that you think you saw that tonight? Yeah, I thought we were sharp, um, especially offensively. You know, we did a great job taking care of the ball and um, got a lot of good possessions. And it just was a matter of time before our defense kicked in. I mean, they they had their way in the first half. So um, much better job in the second half, challenging shots and and um, getting you know multiple stops in a row to try to generate some some momentum how odd was that ending it was bizarre it was bizarre i mean you know it seems like a few times a year you get clock issues um that's about as extreme as i've as i've ever been a part of um where the backup unit doesn't work either and it's unfortunate um you know i felt bad for the fans you know that was a great game and um all of a sudden the last two minutes it's um you know, everyone's just kind of looking at each other, wondering what to do. Um, I also don't like the rule that you can go back and look at a, an out of bounds. You know, LeBron's three. Um, that seems to happen once or twice a year. Love to see that rule go away. Like, I mean, I think we're trying so hard to get everything just right, but at the expense of the flow of the. I mean, who cares if a guy's foot is half an inch on the wall? Is, is that worth going back 45 seconds and changing everything with the unintended consequences? I, it's not not my favorite rule for sure. Yeah, and Steve. On that note, I mean the clock issues aside, do you have concerns generally with just how long the reviews can become? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not a fan of replay. I think we should have replay just for buzzer beaters, and that's it. I mean, we we don't you know the whole goal is you know with replay is to try to get everything right, but you know there's a hundred plays at each end every night that are subjective. Um, it's not a game. It's not tennis. It's not a Hawkeye where the ball's either in or out. It's um, There's all kinds of subjective stuff that happens. We're never going to get everything right. I think the flow of the game is way more important. Wow, that's interesting from Steve Kerr. I, well, I mean, he is an old school guy. I guess I would disagree on that. I, I think there's a way that you can limit review time while also getting it right. And so from what Steve Kerr, what sounded like what he was saying, he basically would have given LeBron James the three points in the corner. And that would have been a huge shot at that point of the game because I believe it was 124-117. And they, have a, they had a little bit of a cushion as a result of that. Now, Draymond also got called for the travel, and I thought that was the right call as well. It just took five minutes. And then I think what just compounded everything was, of course, the shot clock issue that couldn't even be figured out. I think they had to have the PA guy eventually just start counting seconds out loud. 
So all of it together down the stretch of the game wasted a lot of our time. But I, I am kind of surprised that that's how Steve Kerr feels. I, I do agree that the flow of the game is is important, but it's important until you get jobbed. And it's important until the wrong call impacts in a big way the result of a game. And to me, I thought even though it took a long time to get those calls right, at the end of the day, they got them correct. And they might have counteracted each other, who's to say, but I think the Warriors won the game. And if LeBron had kind of got a, a sneaky three points, I don't know, maybe the game goes a little bit different. So uh, I, I guess I would I would disagree with with the head coach of the Warriors on that, uh, that that flow is ultimately the most important part. To me, it's about getting the call correct even if sometimes it comes at the behest of what the players are doing. I just felt like the, the shot clock violation was really where the, the biggest issue was tonight, following, of course, those two elongated reviews. So, interesting. Uh, but but something else, and as we got a few minutes here left on Warriors Wrap-Up, 888-957-9570 is the number, by the way. Uh, Evan Giddings with you here on 95.7 The Game. I thought this game was important for a few reasons. Number one, it's ne- it's a necessary victory if you don't want to push yourself back to the 10 spot and keep yourself there, essentially. And if you're going to make a push, like Steve Kerr talked about earlier this week on these airwaves, it starts in Los Angeles, it starts by beating a team that's giving you fits, and it starts by picking up a win when Curry gets back and you get it full strength. That's one. Secondly, I think Kerr and the Warriors showed us they wanted this game by the rotations tonight, by the eight, really eight and a half man rotation that Steve Kerr employed throughout this basketball game. Now that included, or I should say excluded, Moses Moody, Dario Saric, and Kevon Looney. Moody is someone that people have clamored for. Looney is a three-time champion. Saric has been phased out of the rotation completely. But to me, all the backup wing minutes are probably going to some combination of Clay Thompson or Gary Payton II. You know, Kaminga, Wiggins, and Draymond are the front line that is going to determine in many ways how far this team can go against teams that are going to be bigger than them and some situations are going to be longer and more athletic than they are. And also, along with the front court of Curry and Pajemski, how high can they keep the floor of this team? And Clay Thompson has, to his credit, lean all the way in on the microwave sixth or seventh man, first shooter off the bench that's going to come in and chuck and give you points in in flurries. I mean, 17 points in the first half, or pardon me, 18 points in the first half was absolutely integral to the game tonight, along with Kaminga's first half performance. Wiggins in the first quarter, allowing Curry to eventually get going over the final three periods. I think the way that Steve Kerr used the rotation tonight is the way we're going to see him use it in big games down the stretch of the regular season, but perhaps more importantly, the playoff rotation. Throughout the season, Steve Kerr has been searching, whether it's from 12 men, from 10 men, depending on injury and suspensions, he's been trying to find a way to whittle this thing down to an 8- or 9-man rotation, or perhaps even 7 in in some situations in playoff scenarios, where you're going to have to lean on your dudes. Your best players are going to have to play heavy minutes in big games, and it's going to be mano a mano, and it's going to be Kaminga versus LeBron, or it's going to be Curry versus Russell in a situation like this, an elimination game, hypothetically. But it's going to be man on man, and our best players, the Warriors' best players, have got to be better than the opposition's best players. And I think Kerr's been trying to figure out how he can get down to eight, or on some nights, nine men, like he was tonight, and how they stack up against a team that has given them trouble. And against the Lakers tonight, to their credit, I know Anthony Davis missed the final three periods, but they beat the Lakers. They staved off a 40-point LeBron James performance. They were able to hold off a D'Angelo Russell you know, offensive performance in the second half. They were able to keep a Los Angeles Lakers team that had killed them on the glass and in the paint through the first period of the game. They were able to keep them at bay. So I think that what Kerr revealed to me tonight was what he's going to look at to bring out in the postseason. And that's a five-man starting unit of Curry, Pods, Wiggins, Kaminga, Green, and a three-man bench of Trace Jackson Davis, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson. And if Gary Payton II needs to play, that's what's going to be the rotation. Anything beyond that is going to be out of necessity. But I think what we saw tonight was the eight, eight-and-a-half-man rotation that we're going to see come postseason time, and specifically play-in tournament time. 
So I, I think there was a, a little more to this game than just the victory itself. Um, I was happy to see Curry come back off of injury, get right back into the flow of things, because at, at the end of the day, when, when Curry plays his best, this team is is going to be in any basketball game, and it's just going to be a matter of, of finishing. Even at age 36, he is still unbelievable. Um, when Draymond Green is passing the way that he was tonight, and also, I know he didn't have to defend Anthony Davis much, but even in the few minutes that he was out there, I thought Draymond was good. Where AD gives the Lakers so much more than he can offer is is on the defensive side of the floor. I mean, it, it, the, the paint just opened. Like the you know the the floodgates just open for the Warriors getting into the paint. I think they were fifty eight to forty after the first quarter once Anthony Davis went down, and that is you know plus eighteen. That's where the Warriors have had trouble against the Lakers. So you know all, all this leads into the upcoming homestand that they have. It's going to be the Knicks, the Grizzlies, and the Pacers. To me, grabbing wins against those teams is is going to be important. Do I think they'll beat all three of them? I hope they can. But again, you're looking at from now, from Saturday until next Saturday, you're looking at four games in seven days. That's another condensed schedule for an aging team that might be shrinking the rotation at this point. So how can they stay fresh? How can they stay balanced? How can they stay, most importantly, consistent? Because the only thing consistent about this team for the majority of this 2023-24 season has been their inconsistency. And so tonight, I think, is a great place to leap off from as far as where they can go but Monday, what does the rotation look like? Does it remain about 34, 35 minutes primarily for those starters? Is the bench just going to be, you know, so, so? Are, is Chris Paul going to play 20 minutes? Is he going to play more? Can Clay Thompson continue to shoot the lights out like he has since he's been coming off the bench overall? The percentages have been there in a positive way. I'm not really counting the last few games because when Curry's been out, Clay's had to step into a role that is no longer his, and that's the starting lineup. Um, I also, also am keeping track on what. Jonathan Kaminga can continue to do with 17 in the first half, 10 points in the first quarter. The Lakers, I thought, made him beat them to start the game, and he did. That was something that he could not do last year in the Western Conference semifinals, and that, to me, indicates a leap, at least in the right direction in terms of scoring and offensive playmaking that Kaminga was not at a year ago at this particular time. So a lot of growth left for the Warriors this season. As we wind things down here on Warriors Wrap Up, appreciate everyone tuning in here on the YouTube on the YouTube and Twitch chat powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Thank you to everyone who chimed in on the Comcast Business Text Line, everyone that has called in. Uh, we appreciate the community that we continue to build through each and every season, but each and every game, really. And that's the, the fun part about this. We get to read and react to everything the Warriors do, both good and bad. And I'm looking forward to a game on Monday against the Knicks. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip here at Chase Center. I will be on the call, or uh, Warriors Live and wrap up for that. Tim Roy will be on the call, as always, on 95.7 The Game. So in the meantime, we appreciate you. Don't get too crazy tomorrow on St. Paddy's Day. I might. But don't. Just don't, just don't drink and drive. That's all I ask. Later on tonight, on Sunday, just be cool. Don't make mistakes. Have a fun time. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. The Warriors victorious for the first time since 2021 in Los Angeles. A great win, a necessary win against the Lakers. Final score, 128 to 121. Big thank you to Sterling Bennett, our network coordinator. Big thank you to Chris O'Connell producing in the back, getting everything fresh and ready for you as far as clips, highlights, and all the rest. A wonderful broadcast, as always, down in Los Angeles from Tim Roy. Uh, my name is Evan Getting. Sign off from the, from the 95.7 The Game Studios, where the Warriors improve to four games above 500, officially in tie for ninth in the Western Conference. We look forward to keeping that rolling on Monday. Chase Center, homestand coming up, three games. We look forward to breaking it down for you all right here on your home for Golden State Warriors basketball, 95.7 The Game. I'm Bob Burke, founder and chairman of Burke America Parts Group, a family of brands that includes repair.